Hi, my name is Mace Yampolsky. I'm a criminal defense lawyer in Las Vegas. I've been practicing over three decades, and I have some important information for you regarding hit and run cases. In Las Vegas, there are many hit and run cases, or what someone would call leaving or fleeing the scene of an accident. What happens many times is people have an accident, hit somebody and get scared. Maybe they don't have insurance or maybe they've had a drink or two and they leave. And that is against the law. Now, if there's only a little bit of property damage, that would be misdemeanor hit and run as long as someone wasn't hurt substantially. But as of October 1st, 2015, the penalties for hit and run or leaving or fleeing the scene of the accident causing death or bodily injury are much more severe. Until October 1st, 2015, the penalties were 2 to 15 years, but it is a probational offense. Now it is 2 to 20 years and it is non-probationable. Now, the reason that these penalties are so severe is because the state is concerned that many of the people that cause substantial damage were under the influence of alcohol or some controlled substance, and that's why they left. And interestingly enough, Felony reckless driving in the state of Nevada is one to six years in Nevada State Prison, and it's probationable. And leaving the scene of the accident was two to 15, which was probationable, but now the penalties have stiffened. The new statute says the <clears throat> penalties are two to 20 years in the Nevada State Prison. It is non-probationable and it is a separate offense for each person killed or injured. So if there are two people in the car that you hit and both were injured substantially or severely, you <clears throat> would be charged with two counts of hit and run or leaving the scene of the accident. Everyone calls it hit and run, but Technically, it's leaving or fleeing the scene of an accident, causing death or bodily injury. In addition to the felony statute being changed, the misdemeanor statute was also changed. Even if it's only property damage, you're required to stop. And if somebody was in there, you must provide information to the person that you hit and you must render aid. Under NRS 484E.030, which is the new statute, you must render aid. And if you don't, you get six points on your driving record. Now, if you get 12 points on your driving record in one year, then your license will be revoked. Also, if you're involved in a hit and run accident, you must notify the nearest Nevada Highway Patrol or Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. You must stop and you must stay. Of course, if you hit an un, <clears throat> excuse me, unattended vehicle and there's no one there, you don't need to stay there indefinitely, but you must leave your contact information, i.e. put your name, address, phone number, proof of insurance, possibly, on the windshield of the vehicle and have that person call you. I've handled a lot of hit and run cases over the years. Now, people leave for a variety of reasons. Uh, they had to get somewhere, it was an emergency, or uh, they were scared, or they didn't have insurance, and they leave. Usually, uh, somebody has seen them, they give the license plate and <clears throat> identifying information to the police department, the police will go out and search. If they find your vehicle, they will <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, 
they will impound it. And until you take affirmative steps, you're not going to get it back. And police department might say, well, it's evidence. It's evidence of this crime, so you can't get it back. Usually we're able to do so. Another uh, scenario is somebody will have an accident and they will leave on foot and leave the car there. Obviously, the police will know the car is there. They'll impound it. If it's registered to you, then they know where you live and they will try and make contact and arrest you. For these reasons, whenever I represent someone who's been involved in a hit and run accident, I'm extremely proactive. I call the hit and run department. I've handled tons of cases. I have a great relationship with the hit and run department. So I'll call them up and say, hey, I represent Mr. X. He was involved in a hit and run situation uh, at this particular intersection. He was driving a Ford Mustang that's cherry red and his license plate is one don't stop or something like that. And once I do that, it stops the process of trying to arrest my client. Many times I'll call the hit and run department before they, they have the information. And I'll call them, look, I represent this individual. This just happened at this place. Here's the vehicle. And they'll say, well, I don't have anything right now, Mace. Let me look into it. And then they will, and they'll call me back. Now, what I usually do is I'll bring my client in with proof of insurance, assuming they have it, which most people do. It is a, a requirement under Nevada law that you carry at least 1530 you know, 15, and 15,000 to 30,000 uh, coverage. And I always tell people they need a lot more, but that's, that's a separate issue. Anyway, I will call them and say, okay, I'd like to make an appointment to bring in my client. So we'll come in and we'll have a discussion with the officer now granted this can be construed as you know waiving the right of self-incrimination but it's mostly biographical information and right now the focus is to resolve the case not go to trial uh, each and every one that i brought into the police department we've able to resolve now normally what will happen is my client will talk to the officer with me present. Now, sometimes they don't tell the truth. I don't know what really happened, but they'll minimize the situation. In one situation, uh, my client said he hit another car. He didn't say that he hit an individual. So after he was talking for a bit, the officer stopped the interview and said, hey, Mace, can I talk to you? He said, look, I know it's more severe. This is what it is. You know, if he's going to talk to me, he needs to tell the truth because giving false information to a law enforcement officer is an additional offense. So in that case, we were able to convince the client to tell the truth. Once he did, we were able to resolve the case. And by meeting with them, this stops them from getting an arrest warrant because if you get an arrest warrant, they must arrest you and you need to be processed at the jail. If we find out about this, we'll file what's called a motion to quash the warrant, bring the client in, have them processed. But the goal is not to have an arrest warrant. And usually when I bring people up, if the police are going to charge the individual, they'll give the summons to me so I know when to show up in court. Uh, if there is a potential felony and we come in and we provide information, usually we're able to resolve it as a misdemeanor. Now, I've never had one where somebody's died, so I don't know what would happen in that situation. I doubt they'll reduce it to a misdemeanor, but the fact that I brought them in will probably save them the expense and the shame and embarrassment of being arrested. I recently had this case in which uh, 
my client actually worked for another lawyer that I know, and he came to me. And what had happened was he had had a collision and he had been consuming alcohol and some marijuana and he was rightfully scared. So he got out of his car, started to run away. He was confronted by an individual. He said he really didn't remember much. And then he left and apparently the police came to his residence but they didn't find him there his parents were home and then he came to me i contacted the hit and run department i said look i represent this individual he was involved in an accident at this intersection at this time i'd like to bring him in so we make an appointment i bring him in the officer asked well you know what happened i had my client bring in his uh insurance which was plenty thankfully and in this situation in addition to hitting a car he also hit a wall and then when he got out he was confronted by another individual he said he really didn't remember but uh the officer pulled me aside said mace we know something more than this happened. Are you sure your client didn't pull a weapon or something? And I went to talk to him. He goes, yo, I was afraid this person grabbed me. And so I pulled out a knife. Did you stab him? No. It's like, okay. So we went back and said, officer, this is what happened. And he was happy. Uh, the other thing was <laughs> there was some marijuana in the back of the vehicle, which Obviously, it's not a good thing. He could be charged with possession of a controlled substance, marijuana, under an ounce is a misdemeanor, and there were some ecstasy pills in there. Doesn't sound very good. However, I pointed out to the officer that he had driven the car, he had picked up some people. It was a friend of a friend. He didn't know who this individual was, so it could have been that that individual left the drugs in the car after everything was said and done because we came in so quickly no charges were filed my client thinks i'm a hero and it could have been pretty bad the felony leaving the scene of an accident uh assault with a deadly weapon battery with a deadly weapon and all kinds of serious charges but we were able to avoid that so the best advice i can give first of all is if you're involved in an accident don't leave however if you do leave for whatever reason contact a lawyer as soon as possible it's much better if you're proactive it's much better if you contact the police before they come looking for you. If this happens, contact an experienced criminal defense lawyer. You may call me. I've had a great success rate. And in all of my hit and run cases, which probably are about 100 over my career, I've never, ever had a client 